Hello, people of New World. It's me, Lamani, and happy Friday. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be giving you the updated checklist to coincide with the winter convergence update so that all of you can go out and do your best to have a concise and chronological order for what you should be doing every day. This is going to be done so that you can optimize your time spent and be efficient, make more gold, and ultimately progress your character. So let's dive into the winter update and what you should be doing. All right, first things first, I go around and I hit every sack of every winter village. So there's four total. And I go to all 12 towns to go to all the trees to grab all the gifts. This is a pretty multifaceted daily activity that doesn't take a lot of time. So to start, we need to hit at least six trees to get our six diamond gypsum for the day, which will end up giving us two gypsum orbs for some progress. This is the absolute bare minimum requirement. Now, if you go everywhere, you'll end up with a mix of 16 either beautifully or exquisitely wrapped gifts. I'm not quite sure if there's a set rotation on beautiful and exquisite. Today, I got beautifuls from all my villages and I got exquisites from every single tree. Other days, I've gotten beautifuls from some of the trees. It just depends. Either way, each of them has a chance to bonus proc for premium currencies and patterns. So no matter what, a beautiful will always give you three tokens and then an exquisite will always give you five. There's then an additional chance to get the premium, high level token, a blue pattern, or a legendary pattern. For example, I had one beautiful open up today for 88 total tokens in value because I got one of everything. It's just super worth it. When you look at it as a new or returning player or a current player, you can use the blue patterns to roll as timeless shards for free gear chance, or you can use the legendary ones to get a decent dungeon set. But the thing is, you can now roll those for a free 100 umbral shards, or you can use it to start getting expertise bumps if you really wanted to as a returning player. Because when you craft something at 600 gear score, you get that bump. It does take zero armoring to craft. And because of the Azoth changes, it's actually way easier to do this this year because at the most, you will only ever pay 20 Azoth to go to a new location. So you can teleport everywhere and get that done super fast. Then just a quick bonus pivot. I would highly recommend just killing the Winter Warrior like one to three times, just depending on where he's spawning and what you're doing. So if you're about to start a chest run and he's right there, go ahead and kill him. If he's just somewhere on the map close to a winter village, go ahead and kill him. Those spikes, sometimes you get up to five, so that's 50 tokens. But regardless, it's a winter event. You're not going to get to do it again until next year, so you might as well take advantage of it. But by spreading these out and doing it over the course of days instead of just grinding everything in one day, it's a lot less mindless, it's a lot more enjoyable, and you'll get the cosmetics that you still want. Okay, now the next thing is going to involve some chest runs. We're going to have our typical group Zerg chest run, and then we're going to have a solo chest run that you should be doing every single day regardless. This group one, I think, is super beneficial for gold getting everything that you'd want as well as gypsum so we're going to start and we're going to go with the wall you're then going to want to also do beds you're going to want to do helio and then you're going to want to also do cast and now all of these are going to give you huge gold potential with these you'll be using a topaz gypsum potion you'll get all of your topaz gypsum for the day so then you can get some gypsum orbs you'll also get your onyx gypsum from doing this to get those free gypsum orbs so just get a little group put on some luck gear and run around then what we're looking for is bis drops. Yes, is the chance low? A little bit, but it's there. Regardless, you're going to get a lot of different items and no matter what, you can salvage them to get your infused fragments and then turn these into additional XP to try and pull, you know, for instance, an armoring container like we mentioned in our weaving video. Or you get the legendary components and then you can just sell those straight up or convert those and flip them. You'll also get a lot of different crafting materials, big ones being like the golden scarab. But then you can also use things like runes, such you can craft rune glass cases. The world tours net a lot more gold if you just do them over the week. And again, they don't take that long if you just do these ones in Brimstone. I don't think it's worth to go through and do the entire world tour, in my opinion, unless you've got the time for that or you enjoy it. But I think Brimstone offers a lot of different varieties just because of those crafting mats. And there's all sorts of nice name drops that can just coincidentally come out of it. If you just want to be efficient, don't do the entire chest run. Just do Helio, in my opinion. Hit a Topaz potion and then go about getting your Obsidian Gypsum and then go on with your day. Maybe you'll get some good pulls. Maybe you won't. But this is the best one because there's just more Obsidian drops as well as Kefri that you can hit additionally. Okay, this next chest run is a solo one that is absolutely necessary. It's super fast. You can do it whenever. But we're really looking for Scarab pulls here. We're going to be getting Golden Scarab with an increased chance. There's all sorts of materials. You can get some name drops. And then again, there's always that legendary chance. But you're going to be hitting the Elite Chests in all of the acid pools. Now there's a very easy strategy to overcome this. You don't need acid tinctures. You don't need chitin gear. All you need is an ice gauntlet, to be honest with you, and a life staff. The only other thing you need is the highest tier of incense. This is going to make it so that you have a 100 acid capacity. You'll be using an ice gauntlet build that looks something like this. The main things that you need are 
cleansing tomb so that when you tomb you can get rid of all the acid stuff and a pylon so the strategy to follow here is go up to a chest throw down your sacred ground and orb yourself open up the chest zombie guy will come out you can step out put down your pylon and then walk back up to the chest normally you won't even have to tomb and you can get it opened and then double opened and get your loot and then walk away if you don't and you end up getting the acid debuff because your whole thing is filled up you then just pop a tomb, it'll cleanse the entire thing off, and then just go about getting your chest. All right, so using New World Map, I can give you a little idea of how you could do this. Personally, I would start all the way in the north. You can go over here, get this glyph chest, and then hit the elite grave offering. You can then go over to this shrine, and we're going to walk down to the acid pool here, and you can hit all four of these elite grave offerings, and then you can die, respawn at the city, and you can go down to here to hit this glyph chest. I wouldn't recommend going down to this one. It's just a waste of time. But you go to that glyph chest and then you go over to here and then you do your little cycle here personally i went like that and then i went over to there and then what you can do is die again and you can respawn here over here we have a couple things we can do immediately there's a glyph chest there we can also just grab this free offering we'll then go up to this glyph chest before we go and hit these three acid pool chests there then i would say die respawn at the closest shrine and head over to this shrine and then hit your last three chests here and you're good to go. Then the next high value thing I do is I go ahead and do two quick arenas. Find your duo partner, a guy like Swanton like I do, or you find a trio that you can just queue, get them done really fast, 3-0 everybody, and go on with your day. You'll get two Garnet Gypsum, you'll get some PVP XP, and we can use that PVP XP to snowball into drops, gear, or getting faction tokens to help with the next step. This is where our fork in the road comes, or just your other two paths that you'll need to take. First, I'd either do my two OPRs to get my Ruby Gypsum and then get faction tokens, and PVP XP. So that combined with the arena PVP XP, we get a couple of tokens and then we can spend on potentially the bundles of faction tokens that we would get so that we can then purchase our faction gypsum orbs from our vendor every day. This is two free orbs, free umbral shards that you don't even have to think about and it's easy and you're getting other gypsum anyway. Comboed with this, you can now take your Rusher and Conqueror weapons from OPR chests and upgrade them to 600 to turn them legendary and get a third perk. This could result in Biss, or you can just simply get a better salvage off where you get some Umbral Shards returned, but you get an infused fragment from it, so more gold potential. If you don't end up getting enough faction tokens from this, or you just don't have those pop-ups in your PvP track, go ahead and just do three daily missions somewhere. Alternatively, what you could do is go into an expedition. For instance, something easy like Dynasty and get three faction missions from your faction representative and get all of your tokens. The idea in the best case scenario is to get three expedition missions done because they will give you the highest amount of tokens and gold from your daily bonus chance. Nonetheless, we're always trying to get some gypsum orbs with these because it's so free. But if you do do an expedition, you then also get your sapphire gypsum. And then again, potentials of bis, random drops, random things to sell, as well as salvageable things. Okay, before you start this section, it's important to go over to first light and you are going to go and cap this first light fort. The whole point of this is to get your global refining yield bonus up by 10% for all of the things we're about to craft. Please don't be like my friend Dan. It takes five seconds to go through and do your daily cooldowns. Get your Asmo, your Runic, your Phoenix Weave, Glittering Ebony, your Runestones so that you can then make your, these things, Runestone stopwatches, and these are super important. But before we do that, I am going to highly recommend doing a weekly craft prep so that you can just do this without a headache. I'll put out a later series of videos on all of this stuff, but I would highly recommend doing weekly preparation. So for anything, whether it's infused leather, infused cloth, oracalcum ingots, obsidian void stone, or getting your ironwood planks for all of your respective crafts, go through each week and get absolutely everything you would need to craft the 350 of each of those that you will need throughout the week. You'll then get bonus proc chance. You'll also just get more aptitude containers, which will give you the crafting reagents that you'll also need to craft the legendary versions, but as well, it will also give you a chance to proc the high tier refining clothing to potentially sell. So you can remove the headache of having to do this every day through the trading post, or you can just set your buy orders at the trading post at the start of the week. You can either farm this or buy it, but I would highly recommend just you yourself individually crafting everything because it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run, but also give you a slight chance to get some bonus money on the side. You're going to do all of these every day. It's going to give you bonus money, especially if you have that first light bonus chance. But the really big thing is the runestone stopwatches. These will net you a ton of gold if you craft them right. 
What I would highly recommend is if you have your jewel crafting up, using your stopwatches to craft amulets. Now you're looking for health, stam recovery, and something with protection. So to really, really optimize this, we don't want to use a health mod. We don't technically want to use a stam mod. It's like a 3%. We'd like to use something like a thrust protection mod because it's a 1% roll compared to everything else where it's much easier to roll health, which is like 25%, and then the stam recovery, which is almost a 4%. So think about your perk buckets when you're rolling. One thing you have to think about is your emerald gypsum. If you didn't get one from hitting a aptitude container on any of your crafting, weekly prepping, anything like that, go hit a cooking station and grab 130 of a T5 cooking food, 130 of any other ingredients, and then 130 of some kind of spice and get an aptitude container to get that. So doing this every day is really going to net you. The biggest thing is gypsum orbs, and there's a lot of them. And each of these, when you get to 625, is going to give you another 400 umbral shards. And sure, there's some people out there that are like, why do I need more umbrals? If you're constantly switching gear sets or wanna do other gear sets, you need to make sure you're getting these so you can max out your sets to 625 if you wanna pivot or maybe you want a different PVE set. So they're super important and crucial. So opening up one of these containers, I can technically get a, another item to drop. It's a rare low chance, but I can still get those. The other really big things we're trying to do is prep you to get gold, prep you to pull random items like this, uh, crafting materials, anything, but really just trying to optimize your time spent in New World per day to set up your weeks for success or so you can focus on other things and just have fun with the game. I know this is a little bit similar to the last video we did, but winter's here. So make sure you're taking advantage of the winter events so that you can get all the coins and look like a cool Yeti like me. Follow through this, go through doing it every day, and you will find a lot of success. As always, hit the links down below. If you need anything, join the Discord, send me a DM. Use my 20% off code at Madrina's using all caps LAMANI at checkout and hit all the other links. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you to every single one of you beautiful people being you. Peace.